computer. Hi, I'm Judy Witz of Davina Cucina and welcome to At the Kitchen Table. Today, my guest is Nan McElroy, directly from Venice. Ciao, ciao. Bella. <laughs> ciao, ciao. <laughs> so introduce yourself a little, like when did you arrive in Italy? Oh, well, it's so funny because, um, yeah, I came and went for a lot of years before I decided to um, try and live here. I came for the first time in 1995 with some friends traveling around, and then the Olympics were in Atlanta uh, the next year in 96, and I was lucky enough to rent my apartment for the whole Olympics, so I came over oh, to nice. Bologna try and uh, tried to learn the language. I thought, oh, I'll just pick it up. <laughs> not <laughs> so but I was supposed to say six weeks and I stayed two months and yeah. so that could have been, that was probably a harbinger as my first car was a fiat to my dad's chagrin I wonder if that was 100 years ago but so I just kept coming back I went to um uh, coming back to Bologna actually it's when I wrote the started to write the um um Italy instructions for use was yeah, that your first book, book on the instructions? Yeah, first, no, first, my, you know, it was pre-internet, pre-internet prevalence. Uh -huh. So just to have a practical guide that didn't say where to go or what to do, but how to do it. So it was something I needed. So I just wrote it. No, <laughs> but that's what somebody, that was then. Mm. That's what somebody what? told me once when I was in Greece, like in the 70s. They say, if you need something, then somebody else does too. And that's the best way no to start your business. No question. That's what I think. But I just, um, when I decided to try and live here, I thought, gosh, if you're going to, I was living in Atlanta. And I thought, if you're going to move 4,000 miles, just make the biggest change you can. So it, Venice was it. I tried, you know, I decided to come and try and live here. And um, it's just been a, a real, just, you know, amazing process and i'm here now it'll be 18 years in september exactly. and after that we'll have lived here longer in venice than i will have lived anywhere else so that you know for me because i was at home in the midwest and then atlanta and all but what's so funny it's like oh 18 years that's a lot so i talk to people like you and all my a lot of my friends here oh they're here 30 40 so well, that's just very i think there's a whole series there's whole like generations of people like when they came, like I know in Florence, um, the first uh, university study abroad program for Americans was Syracuse University. And they began okay. in 1966 when the flood happened. So yeah. there's that first series of women that came and fell in love with somebody and stayed, right? There's yeah. that, that yeah. kind of yeah. layer of expats yeah. that came as students and fell in love. And right. then there's, you know, over the years, continuing students that stay and fall in love. And then there's people that yeah, come fall and like me fell in love with the city, right? And now the same thing. I've been here since 84. So um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been here longer than I was in America. I left America when I was 30. Yeah. There you see. Yeah. So that's kind of amazing. And you know, I, I do think I fell in love with the way of life. You know, I, I just, uh, there's my, you know, one of the biggest, one of the happiest moments is just like, I sold my car and I don't need a car. I've never had a car. It's like, no, no, no title, no, you know, insurance, no tags, no, nothing. <laughs> I now, need a car, know, we, a car. We have a car, but we just oh, use it. Like, to, I live in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. yeah. But we use it to go to the grocery store and back. If I lived in the yeah. city, I don't need a car. And the best thing I think my advice always to everybody coming here is when you need a car, rent one. Yeah. yeah because really. when you look at the expenses of the insurance, of parking tickets, of parking, uh, everything that you need to have a car, it's everything. much cheaper to just rent it when you need it. And no, I agree. If it breaks down, they fix it. Yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> they just give you another car. Here's another car. <laughs> so that's one tip I think you can give people is yeah. if, you know people that are renting a renting a car in milano and they're going to venice yeah right, right. how much is it going to cost them to park their car <laughs> yeah no don't park don't bring your car here and that usually people figure that out they no, they no. start calculating <laughs> that you know i i it always it kind of amazes me it's like we're just going to drive up like just don't just take the train just take the train leave what? your car wherever you are and take the train up and 
Yeah, I always try to, to I say, you know, don't come with your car, number one. Then you're going to have to schlep from the, that parking lot. It's Buy really it. expensive to park. I mean, it just, it's it's just makes no park, sense to park, to pay to park a car you're not going to use. And then you still have to get to your hotel and schlep stuff around. Yeah. You no know. car. Where's the parking? It's <laughs> <laughs> that way. It's on the mainland. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting just the evolution of to see the evolution of tourism over over these many years. I would say like twenty years now because uh, you know it, it, as you know everybody walks around with the phone in their hands and then you know and then and then the Calais of Venice it doesn't work sometimes you know because it, it gets all blocked and Thick then walls, just, yeah it can't. <laughs> It's the old Venice where you just get lost, you know. <laughs> the way it used to be, it was just kind of fun to explore things. You'd find yourself in a little back piazza somewhere, and exactly, exactly, yeah. it still happens. Yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, the other thing that I, you know, I never expected, I never expected, was to get so involved in Venetian rowing. Mm -hmm. um, I started rowing Venetian style probably a year or so after I got here. And I just thought it was the best exercise you could possibly have, you know. So there was already an established group? There's 20 rowing clubs here. Of women or just? No, a Venetian rowing club. Vene okay. Just everywhere else they have rowing clubs where you sit down. Yeah, here yeah. they have rowing clubs where yeah, you stand. Florence does, yeah. So 20 up all across the lagoon. And uh, yeah, it was very interesting. Of course, you know, everybody else had been rowing their whole lives that, that are in these clubs, you yeah. know, they're from their parents or they're, you know, and of course we just show up. It was, I mean, I wasn't alone, I have to say. Um, there were a lot of women of a certain age who had not grown up rowing or they had been relegated to, you just row at the front, right? You're yeah. just like in the boat and the men will row. And uh, of course, then we wanted to be really good at rowing. And the guys just didn't know what to do with us. They were like, well, we, you just, you know, just fly. And then, of course, you weren't very good. And then they, lo they love to make fun of you. But I have to say, the tenacity of my women friends to just like learn That's how true, to row, yeah. you know? Yeah. And now there, there's women everywhere rowing, everywhere, every way you can imagine. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing, but the difference just, just in the time that I have lived here is like this, like that. Yeah, that's so, so funny. But it's one of the most rewarding things uh, I've ever, I mean, next to learning the language that I can say I've ever done. It's a, it's, we row the, like, for, for just for pleasure for the rowing club, Setimati, for example, we row, I have learned, you know how most people do biking, you can do a biking trip around, now we do rowing trips. So we go a week long, weekend, just for the day, um, row to where you're going, eat, drink, <laughs> you know, stay overnight in agriturismo. Uh -huh. I have seen so much of the territory just how far can from you Rome. Go? We, I've been to Porto Curuaro, I've been to Grado with the, the, the Judeca Rowing Club. I've rowed across from Piran, across the Adriatic to Grado. Oh my God. Yeah, that's the Adriatic Sea. Yeah. And we, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's time to talk to you. Huh. Um, uh, yeah, that was on the, that was on Ferragosto, 15th of August, I think three or four years ago. I guess it's gonna be longer now, but here we are on the flat Adriatic Sea because no one's working on the 15th of August. Perfect. There's yeah, no container, no, right? nothing. So we just rode across. Here we are in our, in our three Caroline, and we're all trading off because there's a bunch of women. We have th our three support sailboats, and that was extraordinary, extraordinary. So, you know, everybody's always looking for an opportunity to, you know, the whole delta all the way up, you know, until, yeah, if it's rowable, some of the, some of the locals, the Venetians, will find a way to lead a group there in a boat. Yeah, so now up. you offer that to tourists too, right? People that come and just want to learn how to row. Yeah, so, you know, that was, uh, I have to, you know, Jane Caporal is the one who started Row Venice. And, but I would, I would, when we would have friends in Venice, we would take them, you know, we'd, ha we'd just take a boat out from one of the, from, the, from Arzana, for example, and let them row like in the evening. And I saw like the people would just be like, oh, this is amazing. I'm like, well, I know it's amazing. I don't know. And so it was sort of the combination of it's like, let's let people try to row, you know, and she had a boat and she started just doing it by herself, just 
taking people out mm -hmm. and it wasn't very long when somebody put up her website that she had too many people she couldn't do all the work mm -hmm. so she and i joined forces and um uh, along with a couple a few other women and we have now built two boats we're row venice she's uh she is still the the administrator we're a nonprofit. we donate uh, funds to women rowing who are just now obtained parity, you know, the prize money and stuff, but really want to support women rowing and kids training and just really any activity that keeps this Phoenician rowing um, at the center of the culture. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you know, you have a club and you have your own boats and or if we like all belong to rowing club. clubs, I belong to two. Um, I have, so I have, so we have the row Venice boats, which are the Batea Cody Gambero. I should have a screenshot here, right? Yeah. <laughs> which is that, which is the point, the, the nice boats with the point on the back. Um, and that we use those for our rowing lessons because they're very comfortable and spacious and everybody's fine whether they're water people or not and uh and then i have a little sandalo which is just a little everyday boat and then i have a boat in, with a friend of mine it's called a san pierrota and it has it was developed after the advent of the outboard motor right mm -hmm. so that's in the 50s and what they did they took the regular san, the sandalo uh, form cut off the back so you could put a motor on it so you can motor it you can row it and you can sail it so venice oh, has wow. its own uh -huh uh wants a native sailing form as well so so you know i just it's so interesting because i did not come here to like be on the water in venice and now i'm on the water more often than i'm in my house oh you got that it's great hand amazing. going yeah <laughs> yeah yeah this is the lessons these are the rowing lessons we have enough fortunately for me to get it yeah. so how did you what, how did venice like shut down during COVID and stuff was it like it was crazy we, it totally did i mean i'm sure you've seen a lot of the images of yeah. around of uh of really water i mean we're what we venice is in the middle of it of a massive lagoon it's it's 215 square miles over 530 i think square kilometers venice is smack in the middle and what's amazing to me so it's really really big and really really shallow it's a meter deep except where some of the canals are deeper or they're dredged with larger boats but but um you know, this is, uh, it doesn't take, a, it doesn't take any sort of motorboat to just turn that lagoon up, right? Yeah. And when you see the, the water that's cloudy, it's not because it's dirty, it's because the bottom has the been traffic, turned up yeah. with, by the big motors and by the motors and the, and, uh, the speed and the fact that it's very silty. So what was so astounding, and we were, you know, we did the, uh, we delivered vegetables and produce, produce and fruit and produce from a from a vendor from the mainland to during the during lockdown. Oh great. Because nobody yeah. would go out, right? So they would order from them and we would just, you know, put our mask on and put our put our get our boats and load up with and go around the lagoon and deliver these there were these, you know, yeah, produce I don't think and people stuff. realize like everything's brought in. I mean you do have a couple of the orphans. Everything's on a boat. Yeah. Everything's, everything's on a boat. On a boat. Everything's on a boat. Your ambulances are both, your vegetable stores are both. I mean, there are shops, but the larger shops are all on boats. The garbage trucks are boats. Yep. Yep. Everything's a boat. Everything's a boat. Fire trucks are boats. Fire yep. boats are boats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a friend who came from um, from the state. She used to work for you. She retired from UPS and she, she there was a UPS boat. It's a boat. And oh, it had, yeah. had turquoise on it. And he said, what, it's not brown? So I noticed like, like six months later, they painted brown. Oh, <laughs> and funny, I sent her yeah. a picture, I'm like, oh, it's brown, we can all, <laughs> it's too <easy. laughs> so You can recognize you know, it, right? Yeah. Everything's a boat. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think about it anymore. That's very And are funny. you still doing your wine tastings? Well, the wine tastings, as you can, as you can imagine, uh, kind of, um, because they were indoors, they were so they sort of like stopped. And that you know, we have no travelers. My, uh, we have no Americans. Really, a few Americans, but America is not traveling. U.S. is not traveling. Canada is not traveling. The U.K. is not traveling. Yeah, yeah. Australia is not traveling. Yeah. So and we that's, get that's French, kind German, of and yeah. yeah. So um, so anyway, the wine tasting is kind of you know ground to a halt. But, but what you do we, that. what I have been doing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, just yes, explain. I, we're, we're thinking about like people are planning now. You know, six months out from spring, and I really think it's now. 
keeping themselves happy, they're planning their trips. You know, so exactly. So, I'll, that's a, so the other flip side to the row to 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 the row Venice and trying your trying your hand the Venetian and uh, Venetian rowing is the wine. I became you know I came here and I I like the idea of wine and learning about wine and understanding some but you know in the states I'd had like four grapes I had Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon yeah, yeah. you know Pinot Grigio and Chardonnay and that's pretty much it right that's what we had for hundreds of years I think and you come here and there's 379 grapes at least so I think oh I think I think I need to go to school so I did I signed up for I'm an ice sommelier so I'm mm -hmm. certified uh yeah certified and and it really is just like any degree it's just the jumping off point for anything but I learned so much just really basic stuff in that course. And I thought, gosh, you know, maybe somebody else would like to know this. So we organized Venetian Vine. And uh, really it's a way to, you know, people come, you know, Chianti, Sangiovese, great grapes, great area, Tuscany is great wine, but it's, you, you don't understand that every region has its own version of, of wine and you should drink that when you're there. So when people come up here and order Chianti, I said, it's not, you can't have it. You have to go with the food <laughs> yeah. either. You know, the whole what does it? Carrot no, with no, no. You know, so so anyway, I love to do tastings of um, kind of centered around, certainly centered around. We call it the Tri Veneto. So it's it's the Veneto, it's Friuli Veneto Giulia, and uh, Trentino Alto Adige. I and mean, if you cover all, that's really just the whole north east. I would say quadrant, but it's that section and so many grapes and so many wines and they're just delightful. And um, so I like to have people sort of sample mostly those, but we go outside the region as well, but mostly want not international grapes. I never serve a Chardonnay, never serve a Cabernet. Never. And the, and the, the uh, baristas law suggested to us, oh, have a Merlot. Nope. <laughs> nope. But you know what I find nope. is that it's really interesting because I don't think most people know what a Chardonnay grape tastes like. They know what a barrel no. tastes like. No, that's but right. I do I think having a Chardonnay in Europe is totally different and a Merlot in Europe. It is, it is. There's a I lot agree. less wood in all of our all of our wines. And so right. I think it's um and it's also interesting usually how Italians blend and what grapes yes. they blend with. So yes. uh, just opening up people's minds. Um I don't like that's really like, what we do with tasting no, and that's no. really what that's really what we try to do here is just introduce them to you know just uh, you know this as always said it's drink different you know just um try something you've never heard of and drink locally you know really see what i mean and now we have so many really great wine bars that you can just say i want to try something local it's like talk too heavy you know, you know a little bit fresher white or red and they'll suggest something stupid and you know really nice for you and very often we'll let you taste it before they serve it to you so yeah. you're really you know we're, we're set for wine <laughs> but one of the, the reason, number, I, reason really I live here number 278 when someone arrives is that they do book an event like that where they yeah. get to meet somebody from the region yeah. from the area yeah. and um and I'm really pro expats because I think we see a different side of the city for certain things you can yeah, that's true. Uh, Very true. have a vision of what the problems might be. And I think they find it easier to confide sometimes with those little problems that they're having. So besides yeah. just being a wine tasting, yeah. you meet someone, you get some feedback and, you know, and yeah. somebody you tell you where to go before. eat. <laughs> you know, oh my God, you know, this isn't working. How come? And like, oh, we've already, we know everything that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. <sighs> Yeah, and now you know all the you know all the rules have sort of been like upended since uh, since COVID. So what is still working, what's not working, what you still find, what you probably can't you know you, you probably can't do. But of course, in the summer now, it's almost normal, almost right, um, because everybody's outside. Everything's yeah. outside. You can eat outside. You can so you can. This is what we do anyway in the summer, and. Uh, the museums are museums are open and they have certain rules and you can you know uh maybe limits on the number of people etc cetera, etc cetera. so but you know there's very little here that that you can't do right now and i was trying to convince my friends it's like just get on the plane just get this is the year to visit to take Italy. advantage this of it yeah 
because <laughs> everyone is coming next year. It'll be back just like, you know, this is, but so send people, the people who, the Americans that we've had for rowing lessons have done just that. They're like, okay, we're just going to go. <laughs> no, exactly. Just, you know, you have it leave yourself now. Yeah, and it, it, um, it's crowded. It's crowded enough with all the Europeans and yeah. Italians on vacation. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that's just it. And so like, what about with um, them moving the boats now to, where are they going, Maguera? Where are they going? The cruise ships? Uh oh, oh what you know, this, oh yeah, this I is, forgot. This is, no, 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 it's, it's, um, it's the funniest, it's the, this is the very, uh, very a local um, reaction in that you pay attention to the news, but not too much because you know there's so much they say just to get you off their back so yeah. you just come over and, go, oh, oh, but dude, oh, this is her. and you know we go okay and then a week later it's something else it's something else they yeah. saw it you know said no more ships and then the ships came in like yeah but they haven't get kept. and then what we want them and you know jane demosto is does a wonderful job of just keeping this at the forefront is uh we, we want them not only out you know away from the, the the bacino or the what goes right in front of San Marco, but we want them out of the lagoon. The lagoon, of course, as being a rower, I've you know I've just yeah, I'm in it all the time, and the the um, change in the speed of the tide. We have two tides a day, about a meter, and you used to just like come in and go out, and now it's just like a river, boom, you know, uh, and that's all the difference and make all the difference of. The dredging they have done for these big ships, first container ships, petroleum ships, the 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 tourist ships, and and the right way to, to do it would be to limit the size of the ships. I always said too big, too close, too too many. Yeah, yeah. So we need fewer, we need smaller, and we don't need them running right in front of the lagoon. So what we're that Margarita is, uh, Margarita is the alternative but that's they still have to dredge a canal another canal into the yeah, lagoon before they can even use bad. that right and then they still have to schlep everybody into town it's exactly. just so unappealing so unappealing it's un they, they you know it's just i just wish venice wasn't a cruise port i just don't want it to be and i you know but if i were queen <laughs> i'm just like a mouthy expat so <laughs> No, but it, it's just, you know, it's so hard to live, you know, you know, even in Florence as a tourist town, you're just, just so overwhelmed by these masses of people coming in yeah. and, you know, Venice is so tiny. So the roads are so tiny to walk on. That is no, just, it's, it's just, you know, it's in the end, it's a safety hazard. By the time you get the people who can fit in San Marco, if there was ever no reason to have to evacuate them uh, in, in an emergency, you just flat can't do it. I mean, people would just be trampled and they would suffocate because it's not physically possible. Physically possible. You'd have to go in the water. I mean, and then you'd just be yeah, like, let the water's Yeah, I could just see like, it just doesn't make any, you know, it, it, it's the mass tourism that is the killer. It's really, you know, buses of 80 people, buses of 100 people, ships of 5,000. It's too many people. It's too many, it's too many people to enjoy the city. You can't. Yeah, and it's so like how possible. many ships would dock in a day? It wasn't just one ship of three to 5,000 people. It well, was I think I count, days. somebody counted 20, 20 something, 21. I counted 12 once and, uh, you know, it's 12 times four times five times three. So 20,000 people, 35, what are you talking about? It's, it's not, it's not possible. Yeah, and and yeah. really going all, all along, right in front of San Marco, along the Riva degli Schiavoni, you know, just throw, it's like, who's having a good time here? And is it, raise your hand, you know, yeah, I can't, yeah. it's like, it's so far from the way I would love to travel, the way I like to travel. I just, I would never do it, but I, I don't know what, it's like, why? I, I, so I just stay in my lovely open Canareggio. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask what region, is, you, what region of the city you lived in. Yeah, I live in Canareggio. I lived uh, near. Um, is that that's the question, right? Do you live in Venice, Venice? Like that's the test. Yeah. yeah. Well, my <laughs> do you live here all, 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 all year round? Uh -huh. Do you live here all year round? And do yeah. you live in Venice, Venice? Yes, yeah, yes. My um, <laughs> my aunt, when her husband died, uh, cashed in like the the the, the his. Uh, inheritance or whatever and he wouldn't allow her to be an artist and so when he died she took all her money and she moved to venice and she lived there for 35 years she died at 85 years old 
and her last wow. place that she lived in. I mean, she used to live on the Grand Canal and hang out with Peggy Guggenheim and all that. And then yeah, over yeah. the years, as um, she stopped selling, like she was a paint, she painted. So she had friends in America that sold her paintings for her and stuff like that. And little right. by little, she sold less and sold less and was living on less. And so she moved into a little studio apartment over on the Judeca. It was so cute. Yeah, I know. Cute. Yeah. There's a lot of, there are, that, there are a lot of artists that live over there in Judeca, mm -hmm. you know. That's, yeah, no, it's it's wonderful. My favorite rowing club is over there. I just, I just like it for a lot of reasons. Um, but it's another area that's sort of a little more open. You get a little more sun. You get a little more, you know, movement and stuff. It's really Yeah, she great. was right on the waterfront. So she had, you know, yes. air and a view. So I live next to, I live really close to the Madonna del Orto and the uh -huh. Campo de Mori. So it's really close to the Misericordia where it's all happening. I did told somebody one of my new favorite bars. It's called La Sete. It's uh, next to uh, the Rio Bostre. The Rio Bites, really lovely. I'm hoping I can do tastings there when we can pick up again. Um, uh, and uh, I said, I didn't think it was possible to have a bar closer to my house. And yet they did it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and Isn't that crazy? I'm yeah. like, oh, well. <laughs> How fun, huh? So, that's good. That's great. Yeah. And so, um, so what else? Is are the instruction books still around? They are around. I think they need to be upgraded. And I was trying to think of um, putting them online somehow, but I would have to go run around and uh, and uh, do the research for them. And you would say, what's happened is once you get, you know, you once you get where you're going, you're you're sort of planted there. I have done done haven't done enough traveling, you know, in the myself. So I'm hoping that that will change shortly. You know, like next year, I hope I can get out and about a little bit. See the, see the rest of, return to the rest of Italy. I was thinking about the Sabine, the uh, Sabina, mm -hmm. uh, the Sabine Hills on the Northeast or the Sicily or even Puglia. Yeah. So I yeah. need to get it. I need to get, to get out and about. Yeah, just, <laughs> I love Sicilian wines so much. Don't I? You know, Ariana Occipenti, do you know her? Yeah. Do you know her wine? Well, I know her wine. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. The thing yeah, is, yeah. I don't no, no, really fabulous. like going on wine tours like to wineries. I just like right. to drink. I agree. I don't want to hear yes. the stories about the barrels and, and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just not- a, Well, the really thing is, if you go to a winery, if you go to a winery, you just get their wine. If you go to a, to a local, a really good wine bar, then you can have a choice of wines and you can compare and so I can contrast and that. And I like having so, it with food. Oh, absolutely. So I like absolutely. being so I like being informed and I like tasting a lot and I like drinking a lot. And yeah, I love um small women winemakers and yes. I like um things from Mount Etna. So I think you I yes. mean living here, we get we're lucky that we get to taste this stuff all the time. Indeed. I, mean, Indeed. I can get some of the more commercial wines in my grocery store, you know, Donna Fugatha and sure, and, you know, sure. a lot of things. And then you start to learn and to, Talk about weird grapes, man. Oh God, Sicily. <laughs> it's like you're tasting yeah. like the original Greek grapes that wine was first made out of. But uh yeah, I think wine travel is fun with people understanding to really drink locally when you're eating, you know, ask for a local wine. Yeah. Maybe start with a table yes. wine and learn about these little grapes and see which one you like and then build up. And I think also that um Italy doesn't mark up the wine prices as much on bottles when you're eating. Oh, no, but you can drink. You can drink. A really good wine inexpensively. And if you go and buy it at the grocery store, you save a ton of money, but it's not yeah. like in America where something would be like so outrageously expensive, you know? No, I agree. I don't, I don't understand it. And I, it, it, what's lovely now is that a lot of the rest, my favorite restaurants here, and I'm sure other places, um, once upon a time, if there were just two of you, you would go and you decide what bottle to order and then you, you know, ho hopefully drink the whole thing. But now, um, Vino Adigio is one of my favorites. He's got so many wines, you yeah. know, by the, by the glass. So you can go maybe two or four people and he'll bring you a bottle or a glass, you know, for each, each course. So you can have a small, you can have a lot of different like wines. Like a tasting that go size of wine. Exactly. 
And uh, it makes all the difference. I mean, how can you decide about one bottle, the whole thing, your whole dinner, your whole, you know, it's just, it's another option. Now, if there are six of you at a table, then you're going to get a bottle. That's no around problem. Yeah. Get yeah. Off very easily. So no problem. <laughs> you know, Vini that you know is one of the first places my aunt sent me to. And when I we bet. went, it was a bakoto in the front. Yes. And there was a little door and you went into the back and you got to the restaurant. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Not now. They've done, but it's they've so done funny. really well. They've worked really hard and they've done really well. No, it's one of my, it's one, I have a lot of go-to's restaurants. And of course you, you decide on the, where you're going to eat, uh, depending on who you're going with and what they want and how they want, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I just, I'm always, it's just a delight to be able to take people there. It's close to me mm -hmm. and uh, everybody's always happy. I'm happy and they're happy. <laughs> That's all you need, right? You know, that's all you need. You know, I want to go. I'm not going to go anywhere if I'm not if I don't want to eat there. I'm not going with you. Well, yeah, I think that's <laughs> us too. It's like we'd rather stay at home and just even have a mozzarella and tomato. I have to, I have yeah. to go out to a restaurant I love. Yeah, it's, yeah I agree. It's, it's too much it. money not they to have be. To love I can't. Me. I'm not going to make you happy if I don't want to eat there. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. If you don't have good yeah, feelings about crazy. that. Yeah. And so um, what I'll, I'll also put a link to your website uh, on the link to this and like YouTube and everything. Do you have one website? Or yeah, I would do Instagram. Instagram. I'm my website is, has stuff on it, but I, I'm not very good at like keeping up. But but yeah, put rovenice.org and uh, Vinnie Absolutely. We can put Instagram and then Living do you have Venice. like a links to everything from there? Yeah, that's good. That's, I'm living I'm living Venice. So that's that works well. I can do a little yeah. bit of everything there. So. So, Super. Um, well, this is I, a great thing that you're doing. You've just like, you've just like regrouped completely since, since what COVID. What else is there I, to do? I didn't want to sit around and just be depressed. You no. know, I mean, that's just it for all no. of us living in tourism. I mean, everything just yeah. vanished, you know? Yeah. We just, we, it was just like poof. And, uh, well, I think we understand now that we're going to have to live with this thing. I'm for row. For, I'm going to go up to England. I'm leaving on Monday, and we're doing row Venice. We're doing uh, 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 we're try, letting people try uh, Venetian rowing in Woodbridge, which is on in Suffolk near the. You know where it's near the the uh, Sutton Hoo. Did you see the movie The Dig? Nope. Okay, well it's that big long Anglo-Saxon ship, but with it's a great film, by the way. But anyway we're going to, they have a lower local uh, rowing club there. And then some people are coming from London. So we'll be doing some, we're demonstrating and letting them try the try Venetian rowing there. The, the, the uh, uh, rowing club city barge, which is a Venetian rowing club from Oxford is bringing over two boats. So I'm going to take my KN95 mask and I'm yeah, going to wear it yeah. all day on the now, plane. Now when you, I know that when British there, people you know, come here, we're doing. When Brits come here, I know they're supposed to quarantine for five days. Do you have to quarantine going there? Or have no? you ever known anyone to even pay any attention to that? They don't call, they don't check. You know, I don't know. I just, um, I would well, want to I'm willing to quarantine when I come back. But all I can say is the difference between what happens when you go to England, you know, before they drop the quarantine, you know, they call every five minutes and they're like, where are you doing? What are you going to get? Here they say, well, you have to quarantine for whatever. <laughs> it's child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I'm gonna, you know, if they, I'll, I'm happy to quarantine on the way back. So that's, it's only five days, which is good. You take the two Yeah, it's, it's no big deal, but I was just wondering if they had the same thing going there. Cause I know I have a friend that lives nope. in England and she's they terrified, dropped. you know, it's just, it's such a mess there that people that, um, that have had COVID are getting it again. So I don't know what's going on. It's a mess. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, don't go to the pub for one thing. <laughs> A, don't go to the pub. Yeah. But again, the activity, I'm staying with a good friend and uh, I'll see some other, other friends in a small context, but uh, you know, I'm not going to any concerts. I'm not going to any, you know, yeah. I'm just not, yeah. no throngs, no throngs. And 90% and of what we do is gonna be outside. Outdoors anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah just I just think if you're smart and you've been vaccinated, I just, um, I just found out I have a couple of friends that aren't vaccinated. And are not going to vaccinate. I'm like, oh my god! Now what do we do? You know, it's so no. stupid. No, no I mean, I'm sure you're like me that 
from all the traveling we've ever done, you always had to get vaccinated for travels. We had cards, we had to put them in our passports. You couldn't go places. It's no big deal. I don't know why this is different. And this seems more serious that we're actually living in it, you know? I don't, I can't, it's beyond me, beyond me. You know, I, I, I couldn't live, I couldn't wait to get vaccinated. In fact, I, I went out and got the second shot early because they happened to have an extra. Uh -huh. I was like, by chance, do you have your PSA de Roma? You know, they had a place, do you have any extra? I was like, oh no. Oh yes, we have one left, give it to me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I anticipated that by like three weeks. So I'm good, I'm good to go. I was thinking yeah. about if I'd make it to the States in November, it's like, well, should I get Pfizer there? Now that <laughs> One of my friends who's a doctor in America was saying, you know, by the end of the year, we're going to be need to be revaccinated because he this is like at the beginning, he was telling me, he goes, there's probably going to be new variations. And yeah. so we'll need to, yeah. we all can't get revaccinated. You know? I don't care. Just don't, whatever. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, then, thank you so much. This is so nice to see you. We don't see each other. Well, enough. I know. It's so good to catch up and so good to see you. And now uh, you're doing great. And this is an amazing thing. I mean, just <laughs> complimenty. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't understand. Well, I don't know. The world has just changed. Nobody calls anybody anymore. Everyone's no. like just messaging. It's like sometimes just hearing somebody else's voice and yeah, then no seeing a face, you know, is. Um, I agree. I think we need a little more real contact especially now that we're no, all no cut off for so long i can't wait what was so funny though is i never ever did a video call before covid ever i never looked at my phone on the video i never you know i would talk on the phone and we would message but i would and i would chat you know audio facetime audio but i never did a video because i didn't want to be glued well i and think this is also nice on your, so your, you you know, your computer upside down. or something because it's farther away when you're on your phone, you're kind of like, yeah, right nose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, then you're married to it, you know. Yeah. But it's just, well, it's a whole world again. Yeah. So I'm happy to introduce you to all my friends and we'll just pass this around and I'll put it on IGTV and then I'll link it to Living Venice and Instagram. Link, oh. link it to, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. Well, you can Perfect. email me and I'll put this on later today. Okay. Okay. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you Nan. so much. I need Sintiamo. to drink with you. And growing yes, would be fun. Vice versa. Too. I'm not going to do a boat person, Tamo. but it would be fun. We're going to do it. We're okay. going to do it. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, 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 ciao.